I'm working on a new playlist, or I should say sub-playlist, on the Battletech portion of my YouTube channel here, auto-includes, trooper mechs, this idea that we've got a variety of mechs in Battletech, and you're going to fill out your collection. We're going to get to all those mechs, but generally speaking, we have machines that can be focused on a specific role, uh, like the longbow or perhaps the fire starter, which if you find yourself, or the Vulcan or the urban mech, which if you find yourself either by randomness or by mission design in a scenario that favors that mech, it's really, really going to excel. But likewise, on the opposite side, if you find yourself in a scenario where that machine doesn't match up and it could be a map, then you're in a lot of trouble. If there's no vehicles and infantry to bully around and I'm playing a Vulcan, it's really a sub-average mech, sub-par mech. It's just going to get torn apart. Um, if I'm in a city fight, city tech environment, and I've got Irby, it's got a little bit of punch, especially if I've got some um, budget infantry backing it up. That Those two as a force multiplier for battle value are massive. If I find myself in a desert, the dropship was supposed to leave me in the city. We took some hits. They dumped me out. I'm in the middle of a desert with Irby. I'm in a lot of trouble. That said, there are some mechs. Uh, a couple of examples would be the Jenner, the Catapult, looking at the Thunderbolt, looking at the Centurion in this vlog that I consider auto-includes. What I mean by that is this idea of if I don't know the mission, I don't know the map, maybe we're going to figure out the mission and under the table we sort through a bunch of hex maps randomly and draw one without seeing it and this is what we're playing on. Or I don't necessarily know what you're taking. Look, I know we're playing 4K battle value, but I don't know what mechs I'm going to face. If you throw things into that scenario, into that framework, these auto-includes, which I consider the Centurion one of them, it's, it's going to hold its own. It's going to excel. You're not going to find yourself in that situation where you say, I don't know what to do. So jumping in within that framework, we're looking at a medium mech. Now, a medium mech is kind of interesting, and I pushed up some Tactica there exploring kind of the chassis, the DNA of a medium mech. But essentially what I'm looking for in a trooper slash auto-include medium mech, I want okay battle value. I don't want to be on the absolute high end. I realize that nothing's for free. Can't have a budget media mech because then it'll be a light mech. I want to have the ability to not only take a couple of hits. So I'm, I'm looking at um, average or better than average armor. I want to be able to bully light mechs or, or drive them off. I want to be able to hold my own and put some hurt on medium mechs. Yet if I find myself engaging a heavy mech, we're going to put assault mechs aside. If I find myself engaging a heavy mech, while I'm going to be cautious and hopefully part of a lance or tanks or battle group, I could take one or two hits. I could put a little bit of hurt on that medium mech. Primarily, if I'm playing defensive, and I, on that heavy mech, excuse me, if I'm playing defensive and I round that corner thinking I'm going to engage and a mech powers up and it's a heavy mech, I'm going to probably withdraw. But as I'm withdrawing, I know, yes, I'll take a couple of hits, but I'll put a couple of hits back on you. I'm not going to get taken out, but there's going to be exchange. I'm going to put some hurt on you. It's not just going to be you drive me off, cause some damage, and I, I just you know scratch the house symbol on your mech. So within that framework, the Centurion really fits that well. What we're looking at, primary weapon, Auto Cannon 10. So with the Auto Cannon 10, my first thought is could do the same thing with a PPC. There's a lot of medium mechs that carry a PPC. If we look at the Griffin, well, the Auto Cannon, I think, has a lot more flexibility for medium mech. And that's not to say I don't play PPC medium mechs. Putting aside non-standard ammo for a moment, um, what we see in core battle tech, you're, you're firing out essentially a, a 10 point slug or, or, you know, multiples to cause 10 points of damage. But in total warfare, you've got different types of ammunition that you can utilize. Um, same thing with missile systems. We're putting those a little bit aside because on the channel here, there's a mix of new players, old players, existing players, 
everything within there, I like to start at the basic level because that's where we begin and we build out from there. But the primary thing with the Auto Cannon 10 is I'm saving battle value and I have, I'm saving heat. That's, that's big, right? Um, on a heavy or an assault, if I've got that PPC, even if I'm looking at something like a Warhammer or a Marauder, you know, two favorite mechs of mine, you've been following the channel, you know, I love these two machines. We sit down to play Battletech, open list. I guarantee you, you're going to be fighting one of those machines. Maybe even both if we've got high enough battle value. Pushing that out, they don't have the best heat management, but they can absorb that a lot easier than a medium mech. Medium mechs with a PPC, we've got some heat management issues. The auto cannon, I can be a lot more aggressive because I'm going to be firing. I'm going to be using the mobility, um, the speed of the medium mech, if it has jump jets or not. I've got good speed. I'm not light mech speed, but I'm not heavy or assault speed. I want to use that, and I tend to want to be a little bit more aggressive with the firepower of this machine. So the auto cannon, that's 10 points of damage. You've got some nice range. You've got some nice kick, right? Tag a light mech once or twice, it's in trouble. Put a couple of shots on a medium mech, it's got to check its facing. Heavy mech can shrug it off, but it's still 10 points of damage. Second to this is we're looking at an LRM-10 system. Now, I'm going to criticize things a little bit here, or I shouldn't say criticize, um, more tactical. And we've explored this on LRM tactics, long-range missile tactics, pushed that up to the Battletech playlist. We've got 5s, 10, 15, and 20. And then we've got redundancy, meaning multiples of those. Just really quick to framework it, because this, this builds into the Centurion, LRM-5, uh, you see that on some lower-end light mechs, something like the Thorn. It's a good scout mech, good skirmish mech. I'm going to be running around. I'm going to be firing that LRM-5 pack. It's really just to get range and, and spread and kind of open things up a little bit. I could get lucky. I could hit you with a headshot. I could cause some sort of crit, but it's really a harassment type thing. We also see that on the higher end, if we're looking at something like the grasshopper, you've got that five pack in the head. Is that going to change the course of battle? Um, no, but it gives me something to shoot on the way in as I close for range for all my lasers. So a five pack is just kind of a, a skirmish. You know what? I've got the range. I'm going to fire it. Minimal heat, minimal spread. Let's, let's see what you do, right? Let's start rolling some dice. Now when we get into the 10 or 15 area, now we've got some bite. If I roll average, okay, some okay damage. If I roll legendary for the spread, that's got some bite. So 10 and 15 packs are kind of the workhorse of long-range missiles. Now, of course, the 20 pack, if I roll average, it's going to be like rolling legendary on the 10 and 15. If I roll legendary, that's a significant spread. You could, if I have two of these packs, potentially cripple a light mech. It could really cause some damage. But this ups the battle value. Um, we've got ammunition that requires more tonnage, and we've got some heat issues and other things. So having the 10-pack, I would like it to be 15, and I know you could do custom variants, and we'll talk about the rear laser in a moment because it's easy to say, when's the last time I fired a rear laser? And how about I drop that and put up a 15? And, and I'm sure you, know, you can get some mech head, mech mechanic to do that. But 10, I'd like it to be 15, but this is a medium mech. I need to balance out battle value, and I need to balance out the fact that it's a medium mech. So the 10-pack, it gives that ability. Now, I don't have redundancy. Redundancy in Battletech is you've got two complementary weapon systems firing off. Think of the longbow, 20s and 20s, 5 and 5, LRM packs. Look at the archer, right? Medium lasers aside, you've got those two... LRM 20 packs. Um, side note for the lulls. I usually don't play variants, but there are two mechs that I regularly play variants almost to the point where they've replaced the primary. The first is the locust. Is it the, um, is it the two N the one that replaces those machine guns with two SRM two packs? I get a lot more punch, especially if it's rear armor, get a little bit more range so I can keep that going and it, it, it keeps it about close enough battle value. 
I put down five or six of those on the table, and I'll try to locust pack you. Second to that variant, just on the side note before we jump back to the redundancy, there is an Archer variant, um, usually used outer rim type thing or garrison units where mechs are important, but maybe it's taken some damage or, or you've downgraded some systems. There is a there's an Archer variant that replaces the LRM 20 packs with hundreds of single-use dumb fire rockets. You want to talk about the Alpha Strike, damage a little bit less, range a little bit less, but hundreds and hundreds of rockets firing off. You still have the punch of those. Well, first of all, you've still got the armor of the Archer. This is quickly turning into an Archer vlog, but we got to finish this concept out. You've got the armor of the Archer. You've got the medium lasers of the Archer, so I can be walking up, taking a couple of hits. Not that I want to take it. But I'm going to try and not get hit, but I could take a few. Zap, zap, zap you with the medium lasers. We can engage that way. I get point blank. I got no heads-up display. I got no high-end tech. I've got old-school iron sights in this Archer, and it is has you a point blank with hundreds of rockets. You want to talk about the Alpha Strike for the lulls? It's a lot of fun. But the reason why I framework that is these mechs have – two of the same systems to fire. Having only one LRM 10-pack, it's weak, but it complements the autocannon. We, we kind of see a similar thing um, for a little bit more battle value. The Griffin medium mech has that PPC and the LRM 10-pack to fire off. The Centurion has the autocannon and the LRM 10-pack. They have the same overlay in terms of, of range, pushing that down on the table. So there's kind of a mini redundancy in there, which means as soon as you're in range, especially with um, being able to manage heat, we're going to be taking those shots. And again, if it's a light mech, do you want to eat a 10-pack and an auto cannon 10 shot? If you're a medium, that's going to be putting some hurt on you right there. And if you're a heavy and the Centurion's part of a lance, that's going to be some nice supportive fire. And again, you've got good armor. You can take it. If the Centurion ended right there, if it ended right there, I don't consider the Griffin an auto-include. And, and I regularly play the Griffin. In a lot of my lances, I'll have the Griffin. But I don't consider it an auto-include because that leaves it um, vulnerable if you get to minimums. That leaves it vulnerable to um, a certain build. But now what we look at is the medium lasers. The Centurion has those medium lasers, and uh, the location is important, not being in the arms. One is rear firing. Um, okay, put that aside for a moment because that's more of a, a target of opportunity to see what happens. Although there are some crazy things in Battletech based on initiative where you're forced to move your piece, so you move your mech. I move my mech and I get behind you rear armor. Then you move another mech behind me to get rear armor. So it's like you've got your, you've got your, some mech that doesn't have um, a rear firing laser. Um, you've got your mech. I'm facing you rear armor. Then you've got a machine behind me facing my rear armor, but at least I can zap you um, with my medium laser. So there are some circumstances or um, city fight, city tech where you're surrounded. You'll declare at the secondary target. You'll fire that laser. Yes, I'd love to have two medium lasers forward firing, but it, it works for that target of opportunity. But having that medium laser now means as I close, I've got something to push back with. I've got something that um, I can use. I can certainly fire the auto cannon. I can certainly fire the missiles if we're talking about minimums. And often I do that, but if I'm trying to preserve heat or um, work within those minimums, you've got the medium laser. What I mean by that is if I have that target to take and now we're, you know, we're like two or three hexes, one to two hexes, and we've got minimums, that's going to push me up while you're not dealing with minimum range. But that medium laser means at least I can fire that and I don't have to worry about minimums. Um, likewise, if I'm pushing heat a little bit, I will fire all three, even if it's at appropriate medium range for the missiles and the auto cannon, and it's going to be long range for the medium, I'll fire things out. The Centurion has weapons to consistently fire at long to medium to short range. You've got something every turn that's firing. At least every single turn, 
you're putting something down on the table. That's that's got some bite. That's got some pushback. And whatever situation you find yourself in with this machine, it's got something. It's got an answer. It complements a lance really well. Um, I know in the lore, it's supposed to be a complement to the trebuchet. To fire that out with that kind of missile boat, the two work hand in hand, and and they do work. I'm actually going to make a side note right here. I got to be um careful. I'm working on working on doing some painting as we go through this vlog, and I'm also kind of watching something from another BattleTech channel that I enjoy following. So I'm going to just make a quick careful note and knock knock over my stuff. We're going to have to take a look at. Um, Mechs within a lance, you know, lots of ways to build a lance. Could have a support lance of all heavies, could have a Steiner scout lance of all assaults, you could have a light lance. Usually it's a, a mix of things. If we look at lances where it's like light mech, medium, medium, heavy, we're going to look at combinations of light mechs that if they're battle brothers that work really, really well together, kind of taking auto includes and, and complementing two mech machines almost like they work together. How does that work on the table? So I'm just going to make a quick note. We're going to follow up on that. But the Centurion is definitely one of those machines I think you want to acquire in your collection as soon as possible. Have it ready. Utilize it. So this way you have that flexibility. If you're going into a scenario, a campaign, a battle, whatever, you don't know what you're going to face, this mech will have something to kick back and something to hold. So turning it over to my fellow Mech commanders, mech warriors, where do you see, where do you see the Centurion fitting in? 